How's it going guys and welcome to week one Wednesday or as we like to call it <gasps> Wow <laughs> So guys, we've got Kurt back in the studio, which is awesome. We've got a very interesting camera setup going on here. So we're gonna see how this thing goes, um, but we've got a ton of knives on the table. And what we were talking about today is if you could only have one knife for the rest of your life, what knife would it be? And every single knife on the table came from you guys. So if you're watching live, let us know in the live comments right now, if you don't have one knife for the rest of your life, what would it be? And we might have a little elf go run and grab some and, and bring them back for towards the end here. Um, as always, huge shout out to Wee Knives for being a sponsor of Week One Wednesday. If you don't know why that's important, hold on to the end. I promise it's going to be worth your time. And uh, as always with WOW, we like to start off with some new arrivals, uh, just to let some people who are live show up. And if you're not watching live, let you know kind of what's new out there. So Kurt has our first new arrival. Kurt, what do we got? Oh jeepers. Guys, this is a Boker Kalashnikov. We all love the Kalashnikov, but what is cool and important is that this is a harpoon blade. Mm. And we are going to be getting an array of different blade shapes. So you can get this harpoon blade on the website for 43 bucks. Also, keep an eye out for different blade shapes. Yeah, I actually, out of all the new blade shapes that we have going right now, the harpoon one is my favorite. It's we cool. have some hawkbill blades, we have some other interesting blades, um, but that harpoon is pretty cool. It's it's yeah. way cool. Yeah. So. Jump on the site, check out these Kalashnikovs for 43 bucks. Yeah. Not bad. You guys know the Kalashnikov, always a good way to go. Right. All right. Uh, next up in new arrivals, this one caught my eye today. I was kind of excited about this one. Yeah. This is the GEC, it's the number 62. This is the Farm and Field po Pocket Carver. So, you know, with these multi blade um, slip joints, it's always a fun thing to get yourself cut live. So, let's see if we can do that. <laughs> Cool, so there it is. Um, now, the reason that this caught my eye is um, while we were working remote, I did some st live streams from my house on Instagram gotcha. where I was carving that stick, right? Trying to get right. the ball in the stick. Right. I'm, I probably need to pick that up and do that again. But um, I was looking for a good carving knife and at the time we didn't have any in stock. So I was pretty excited to see this. So new one from GEC. GEC makes some really cool knives, all American made. This particular one goes for $88 on the website. All right, I've got one more over here. I've got a CJRB field, Feldspar. 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 <laughs> I saw this this morning on the website and I was like, hmm, very interesting. Uh, it's it's winning so far with uh, awesome micarta, actually good textured quality micarta. Um, let's see, D2 blade. It's a three and a half inch blade. It's got a deep carry pocket clip reversible. It's got these brass barrel spacers and this little brass ring, little accent there. Guys, this thing is sweet. I'm telling you, you guys need to try these CJRBs out because they're they're really doing it. They're they're doing it right. It's a it's a good knife. Yeah, CJRB has some incredible designs. It's the budget brand for artisan. So kind of oh, how cool. like we has Civivi I don't and know why. Kaiser I didn't know has that. the vanguards, but yeah, uh, CGRB is artisan. So if you see some of the designs in there that look like artisan stuff, that's what they are. Uh, they're they're the same company. That is a Blade HQ exclusive too. Oh really? Yeah. Guys, D2 Micarta Blade HQ exclusive, fifty three dollars on the website. Get them mm -hmm. while you can. These are awesome. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Um, next up for new arrivals on my end, we have the Revo Vipera. Now, this is a new one from the Revo brand. Now, if you guys don't know, the Revo brand is BRS. So BRS has some folders that they've been doing recently, and this is one of their uh, folders that they're doing in the Revo line. I think this is brand new new. To be honest, I'm not super familiar with Revo band, but I'm becoming more and more familiar looking at some other designs. Um, Two-hand opener, just a nice little compact folder, liner lock, deep carry pocket clip, kind of a cool little deal. Um, goes for 24 bucks on the website, so kind of hard to beat. Uh, 9 CR 18 MOV blade, which would you expect kind of in that price range? But yeah, a uh, really cool knife from Revo or BRS. Same, same, same. Um, and you guys can get those now. Now, I have an almost new arrival. So, an almost new arrival, I'll put this over here so I don't get confused. An almost new arrival is, that's right, guys, we have, if you haven't seen this already, we've been announcing it everywhere. We have some Spyderco Manix XLs. Uh, that are coming to the website on Friday. So you guys know the story with these, natural G10, M4 steel. 
This is the first time we're releasing the satin and the coated blades at the same time, and these will be limited to one per household. So you can get one satin blade, you can get one coated blade, but you won't be able to get two of either. So that makes sense. Does that make sense, Kurt? Am I clear? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can, you can buy one of the satin and you can buy one of the coated, but you can't buy two satins. Correct. So you could get both if you wanted, but you can't get two of one. Right. Yeah, sure, it's clear. <laughs> so this Friday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on the website, um, these are going live. So you guys know how these go. It's hard to say how fast or how slow they'll go. So if you want one, be on the site uh, right at 10 a.m., ready to click whichever one you're looking to get. Um, sweet, okay, well, guys, hopefully if you're gonna join us live, you are coming in right now. We are talking today about uh, if you're gonna have one knife for the rest of your life, what knife would it be? So again, if you're watching live, let us know in the live chat what it would be. If you're not watching live, let us know in the comments and we'll check them out as well. Um, but every knife on the table you guys chose, week one Wednesday as always, is brought to you by We Knives. Let's jump into this thing. I think I have one more uh, new, new arrival. arrival. Oh my gosh, I that, totally forgot. Guys, we're just gonna do all, another new arrival. Good. And we have to because Kurt was most excited about this new arrival. I actually really am. <laughs> I'm so stoked about this. Guys, this is the White River Knives, the M1 Caper. Why is this knife so cool? Well, let me tell you. Do you see this right there? Do you see that? Oh, I know Carson zoomed in. I know you guys can see that. That's burlap micarta. And if you're into micarta, this burlap is solid, man. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Texture, everything. Oh, the fit in the hams too. Dude, the caper is a sweet knife. I knew you'd and be stoked on that one. It's S35 yen, I almost said S30. Oof. S35 yen. It's probably like a three and a quarter inch blade, but this thing in its little sheath, which you can also make scout carry. I would carry this scout carry personally. This is a sweet knife. Sweet. It's a, it's a good one. And uh, yeah, it's 35 EN and you can get it for 155 on the website. Nice. Well, since we're already looking in your way. Ooh, do it. Let's, what's, what's the first knife that you have? Who, first off, who suggested it? Why is this the, the only knife that they would carry if they could only have one knife? And what knife is it? First knife, the Benchmade Bug Out. Oh man, he had to do it. <laughs> I, here's why, here's why. I'm getting this out of the way now because I don't know if I'd pick this. Cool. I don't know if I'd pick this. Justin M. Jo. Uh, not gonna shock anyone, but Benchmade Bug Out, whether it's a jeans, shorts, or gym shorts, shorts kind of day, it's light enough and snugly deep carried to the point that I can forget it's there until I need it. Also, it's blue plastic handles, pretty standard blue or blade shape. Won't scare anyone when I do end up needing it. Justin, my man, let's talk about this for a minute. One knife for the rest of your life and you want the bug out? I think it's a great option. I think it's a great option. Everything that you said is perfectly on par with this knife. You guys know my reputation with this knife. I absolutely love this knife. This is hands down one of my top, probably in my top three. Yeah. Probably the, the top one, let's be honest. Because the mini bug out's also in there. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't say enough about the Benchmade bug out. It, to me, it is a light knife that you can stash anywhere, carry it with you, and oh man, it's a, it's a workhorse. I beat mine. I literally work hard on mine. And bug out, man, Justin, he's he's in with the bug out. I mean, this is the thing is, at the end of this, we're gonna, I, I'm gonna pick a knife on this table because we were talking about this earlier and I actually couldn't think of a knife that I would want as one knife forever. Right. And so I was like, well, maybe, maybe from what you guys chose, maybe I'll see one on the table. I don't think the bug out would be mine. I think I might go folder. I think I might go folder to be 100% really? honest. When I'm thinking about use case scenarios across my lifespan, it's been mostly folders. Yeah. Right? Mostly folders. So I might go with a folder. I don't know if it'd be the bug out though. I don't know if I'd pick the bug out either. Yeah. And that's crazy to me. <laughs> like I can't even comprehend it in my own mind, but one for the rest of your life, I don't think it would be the bug out for me. But Justin, you want the bug out. It's a sweet <laughs> knife, man. S30V, you can get them on the site, 120, 130, 140, in that price range. 
depending on which one it is. And we all so, knew we all knew the bug out was going to be on here. It had to be we on all there. Knew it, and this is the thing. This was your guys' suggestions. We saw bug out, bug out, bug out, bug out, bug out. We had to have the bug out. Now, on the exact opposite end of the spectrum, like literally, besides a fixed blade, I don't think you can get any farther from a bug out. We've got a four max scout <laughs> from Cold Steel. <laughs> Now, when we're talking one knife for the rest of our lives, I've carried this thing. This might be my one knife for the rest of my life. It's, I could see this being, it's, it's something that the same way that Jesper Voxnes is an expert at making small knives feel good in big hands, Cold Steel is an expert at making huge knives fit very well in your pocket. And uh, that's yes. something they just do great. So anyways, let's, uh, let's see who, who suggested this and, uh, and then we'll dive into the knife a little bit. So Tony.48472 said, oh, he said the Cold Steel 4 Max, not the 4 Max Scout. We got the wrong one. So, Yikes. Eh. <laughs> so the Cold Steel 4 Max is a little more expensive. Um, and it comes in uh, specifically 20 CV is the one that uh, Tony's talking about. But he said 20 CV folding fixed blade, bold statement, folding fixed blade, super comfy in the hands, ultimate tank of a knife that will never fail you. And that's the thing is, I think whether we're talking about the 4MAX Scout or we're talking about the proper 4MAX, Tony, sorry we let you down by not grabbing a 4MAX. I actually think they were all out of stock. Yeah. I think that's why we got this Scout. Um, but either way, same profile of a knife, but you do get the 20CV with the regular 4MAX, which is pretty sweet. Um, so that regular 4MAX, specifically the one Tony was wanting to see, that one goes for $349.99. So definitely a more expensive knife. But when you're considering a knife that you would carry for the rest of your life, that's not really actually that much money. If I think about how much money I've spent on knives in the last month. Right. <laughs> right. Like, right. <laughs> 349 dollars for a one-time, one-time knife. Eh, not too bad. Yeah. Um, but I, I really, really love this knife. I'd never carried a 4MAX before the Scout, and that's another reason we have it on the table. And uh, yeah, digging this thing. The cool thing, I like how he said it's a fixed blade folder. It's, I mean, triad lock. Yeah. And the stock on that, the thick boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, look at this thing. That's a beast. Like the, the, the stock on this is just crazy. And that's the thing. So guys, we actually have a video that we filmed pre all the craziness that was going on, you know, and it's still just kind of hopefully coming to an end. Um, we have a video that we went shot with Cold Steel where we were testing knives with Cold Steel and they tested this 4MAX Scout and uh, it broke the machine that tests how strong the knife should be. That's awesome. So that gives you an idea of how strong not only the thick stock and the construction on any of Cold Steel's knives are, um, but also how strong that triad lock from Andrew Demko is. Uh, just absolutely incredible knife. And we are gonna be releasing that video soon, uh, now that we're kind of back, more or less. So anyways, 4MAX Scout, and that was from Tony48472. Now guys, we have somebody new in the live comments right now. Uh, it's Emmeline, so she, you guys have seen her a little bit. Um, before we all started working remotely, we had her on the stories here or there. She's doing a lot of our social media now. She's awesome. She has a Civiti Elementum. It's like her new favorite knife. It's great. Uh, I'm not seeing her send me any comments here where I should be seeing them. So either she's in the wrong place or you guys aren't getting any <laughs> shout outs. So if you want a shout out, let us know. Uh, also, she will be the one that is pulling your knife. So let us know if you have one knife that you'd carry for the rest of your life, put it in that live chat. And if Emmeline's in the right place, she may or may not see it. <laughs> that's the cost of doing it live. <laughs> that's, that's the cost. All right, I've got another one over here. This one is an interesting uh, play in the, I, my one knife for my only, for the rest of my life, whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. We're live. Uh, it's the Wii. Isham Design Arrakis. Now, no, here's the thing. So Jamie went through the comments and siphoned all this stuff, right? Yeah. But I saw this comment and I was like, bro, we have to do this. And he's like, oh, don't worry, I already got it. Because this guy has an interesting take on the Arrakis. I'm about to read it. Hopefully I don't slot it or slaughter it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jeez, yeah, guys. Don't slot it. Don't slot it. Don't slot it. <laughs> IR uh, Dude says, hey, I don't know about you guys, but believe it or not, my one knife for life would be a wee Arrakis. I'm mostly in an office environment and every time I need to pull out a knife is when I cook at home or open packages. That's it. We mainly overthink a lot about our knives on whether it can stand to certain tasks or not and don't really think about what we do with our knives. 
I used to think that my knife should be able to baton in order for it to pass my standards. But heck, I live in a city and not even nearly close to the woods. Valid point. If I need to cut a piece of wood for whatever reason, chances are there's an ax nearby. So what I believe now is that you should enjoy that knife and that knife will last a long time and you use it for what it's made for, which is slicing and cutting. P.S. Show the Wii Arrakis, please. <laughs> dude, that was like a book. Dude, that, <laughs> that was a long one. Well so, thought out though. Well IR, out. dude, you know, you made a good point. I mean, sometimes I think we do get kind of caught up on, oh, I'm gonna go baton with this or it's gonna save my life in a survival situation. When realistically, the majority of us, maybe not, you know what I mean? So this is an interesting knife choice. I love the wild design. I don't know if I would personally ever buy one just because it's a little bit too out there for me. But if you want to talk materials, titanium, carbon fiber, Buller M390, like, are you kidding me? That's hitting it out the park. And let's see. Oh, you put it on this side. Oh, I did. I pulled, oh man, come on. <laughs> come on, Kurt, we're live. <laughs> $348, but like you said, if it's the one knife for the rest of your life, like, yeah, buy once, cry once. Yeah, there you, you go, know, right? get over exactly. it. Exactly, that's quality, right? But man, Bowler M390, this is a cool knife. So our dude, that's a, that's a good perspective out here. You know, and he mentioned kitchen stuff with that knife and looking at it, I'm just seeing it now. It honestly, it's got some of the same lines as like a Spidey Chef. Right, where it, it totally has that does. kind of hunched back to it and the blade sits a little bit lower. Yeah. It actually probably would be pretty decent in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, interest, it, definitely a very interesting pick, but also kind of a cool one, not one I expected to see, to be right. honest. Right, I would not have expected yeah. one of these. Yeah, yeah. But good, good pick. Yeah, well, that's a good one. Um, all right, cool. Uh, oh, hey, it looks like Emelon is in the right place because now there's some shout outs in here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so uh, Bar, Bar Psychology said, shout out for the Blade HQ employee, Grace for taking care of me today. So, awesome. Grace, thanks for taking care of people. We have a pretty amazing team here at Blade HQ. You know, unfortunately you get stuck looking at our faces a lot, but there is a ton of people that work in the warehouse, customer service, IT, everything. And it's just absolutely incredible team, wonderful people to work with. So, um, hopefully wonderful people to deal with as well. That's what right. I usually hope hear, so. You know? uh, nobody's perfect, but I hear, I hear right. pretty good things usually. Right. Um, Brooke Baker said, shout out to Trent, he's my husband. Uh, who's about to deploy and is a huge fan of your stuff. So, Brooke and Trent, uh, first off, huge shout out to Trent yes. for going out and uh, serving our country in such a way that's amazing. Brooke, huge shout out to you. I know that's, I've got a lot of friends that have been in that situation. So, you know, hopefully everything goes well and uh, the time doesn't feel like it's too long. That's, yeah. pretty, that's pretty awesome though. Um, Jonathan Wood just said, shout out. Jonathan Wood, shout out, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, Jamic66, he said, first time watching live. Welcome, buddy, good to have you. Heck yeah. All right, so when we're talking about knives that, if you only have one knife, right, what knife would it be? I think of, I think that the, what was the guy's name with the Arrakis? I forget his name. IR Dude. Yeah, IR Dude. I think IR Dude was onto something because, and I was thinking about this the other day, I was actually out camping, right? And when I go camping, I like to do some bushcrafting, you know, just right. to make, keep my skills up, right? Yeah. So fire making, feather sticking, you know, I built a little hut, the whole thing. Right. And I did it all with a knife. And then that same weekend, I cleaned up my backyard, which is kind of a jungle in the back, right? Right. And, and so like, I had some trees and I was just doing a burn barrel, cleaning everything up. And I was using a saw to break down the trees. And I was like, dude, this is so much better than hacking it <laughs> with a knife. Because <laughs> we're not saying here, in a survival situation, what one knife, right? It's like, no, you'd still have every other tool available to you, right. just carrying one knife. And uh, I think that's something to consider is, the reality of it is, is it's fun to bushcraft with just a knife or just an ax or whatever, it's a fun exercise. But at the end of the day, like, if I'm gonna go camping and I don't wanna worry about it, like I'm gonna take a little thing of Zippo lighter fluid, right. right, waterproof matches and a little saw. And that's what I'm processing most of my stuff with. And that's how I start my fire. Just like, shh, shh, and then just throw a match <laughs> on it, we're good, right? Like, <laughs> right, yeah, I, I totally agree. So, um, but on that note, we do have a lot of folders on the table. And uh, one of the folders that we have is more kind of in the budget range. And this is the Kershaw Cryo 2. So let me see who suggested this bad boy. Jay Rutherford 
I feel like he should be like Rutherford the the third or something like Rutherford the third. Yeah, with that last name. Um, so I've had a uh, Kershaw Cryo two in my pocket for years. Tonto Blade does everything I need it to. It is still one of the best looking knives out there in black wash. Fits well in the front pocket because it's so thin, easy to sharpen, and it smells great. Weird attribute, but it all comes into play. I don't know, I don't know bro. I don't know if it smells great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after being in his pocket for years, it's 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 accumulated this. Really I mean, I don't necessarily nice want to smell a pocket either. Yeah, yeah. But hey, dude. Maybe he like keeps potpourri in his pocket or something like that. Maybe it smells great now, right? Yeah. Out of the box, I can't attest to that. But... Just like some dried oranges <laughs> and some miscellaneous dried yeah, exactly, leaves that smell exactly. like your grandma's bathroom. <laughs> So Love yeah, it. so he's talking specifically about the the blacked out model. This one obviously has the uh, it's probably like a stone washish blade to it. Um, you know everything we already know about the cryo. You got deep carry pocket clip. It's a frame lock knife. Uh, I do forget the blade steel on this one though. Four twenty. So it's got a four twenty. Oh no, that is the next knife. I am. Uh, that's what it is. Eight cr. I was like, I don't think Kershaw uses four twenty. <laughs> it's got an eight cr thirteen mov blade and a G ten handle on the other on the face side. So. Um, really great little knife, and for me, when I'm thinking about a knife for life, this has got a lot of the functions, right? Really strong locking mechanism, a pocket clip that I enjoy, a good workable steel that's easy to like resharpen, and then um, some G10, right? Yeah. Something grippy, right? Um, so, I don't know, Kershaw Cryo, Cryo 2, uh, $32.99 on the website, hard to go wrong. It's pretty, pretty Definitely good hard one. to go wrong. Let us know in the comments, would you guys like if you're gonna carry a knife for life, would you like to carry something baller like the Arrakis? Or would it just be more practical? I'm kind of interested, because yeah. I have some baller knives, but I definitely carry my practical stuff more. Right. Huh, it's kind of an interesting interesting idea. It's an interesting thought. Yeah, cool. All right, up next over here, I've got the Cold Steel Recon 1. Now, I know that there was a little confusion at pulling this knife. Patrick, Patrick D. Wilson. Okay, Patrick, he says, Cold Steel Recon 1 clip point, this is the spear point, mm. clip point, I don't know if it was sold out or what, but this is the one we ended up with. And both, we were... both of the Cold Steels we ended up with kind of the right knife. Right, right. <laughs> it's in the realm, so, you know, use your imagination. Uh, it's a Recon 1 clip point, four inch blade, good steel, S35VN, strong lightweight scales, fine tip for precision with the clip point. You know, this is pretty precision. Here's the thing, isn't a spear point really just a modified clip point? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Probably, right? Modified, we're good. A uh, lock mechanism that can hold up to dang near anything you shell out. I personally think you can dress it up or down depending on your dress attire too. Hmm, that's an interesting statement. Do you think so, you could dress this up? I don't know. I don't think you can dress up. I don't think you can dress that knife up. I actually, so so hanging out with Lynn Thompson, right? I've seen him dress up a knife, but he's like had them custom made, right? right? So it's his knife. It's got the triad lock and then I'll have like custom scales, right? And it's like yeah. these really cool, you know, like kind of cowboy looking scales and pearl inlays and stuff. But if you're going specifically with that model, I don't think you can dress that knife up. What's the pocket clip look like on that thing? It is your standard pocket clip. I mean, it is a small it's pocket a short clip for, one. for a very big knife, right. which is kind of cool. Again, masters of making big knives feel small, right? Um, like in your pocket, but mm, I don't know if you can dress that up. Let us know. It's kind of like when uh, Ben said that you that an M16 is a gentleman's carry knife. Yeah, definitely no. not a gentleman's carry knife. Sorry, Ben. No way. <laughs> I, I like the Recon one. It is a lot of knife. That's just what you get with cold steel mm -hmm. in general. When you buy a cold steel, you are purchasing a lot of knife for the dollar amount. And I mean, triad lock, that, everything, they, they make them so they will last forever, no joke. And I think that's something that's really cool with Cold Steel is they stand behind it. That's who they are. Like they, they don't BS around with it. It's, this is who we are. We have big, bold, tough knives. Bring, bring whatever you can to yep. try to take them on. You can get this Recon 1, the spear point at $99.95 on the website. Mm. And, and really with any cold steel knife, especially in that budget range, you're hard pressed to find that much knife for that price. Correct. And, and usually what you get with cold steel is you almost get a trade off of blade steels. So you don't usually get a really nice blade steel in the more budget knives. Um, actually my pocket check, I have a uh, cold steel secret that I'm pretty stoked about. Um, but you do get that locking mechanism. You do get that like just 
burly knife for a really, oh, yeah. really affordable price. Yep. So uh, Patrick with the Recon One, that was a good choice, man. Nice. Cool. Um, all right, so now we are going over. Oh, a little elf just dropped off a knife. We'll have to. We'll look at that one after. We'll wait. We'll wait a second on that one. <laughs> Kurt's checking it out. <laughs> all right. Uh, so the next one is a Buck One Ten folding knife, not the Buck One Ten Auto, okay. which I actually think is kind of interesting. Here's the reality: knives like this are the knives that built America. <laughs> Like full on, like I'm not even like exaggerating, right? Like these are the knives that our grandpas and great grandpas carried, right? Oh yeah. And our grandmas and great grandmas carried, right? To get the work done. Oh yeah. And so I think that you were in good company if this is the knife you carry for life. I know my grandpa Jensen, this is the type of knife he always had. He only had like three knives and they were just like rotated in his pocket, right? One of them was a buck 110. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a tried and true if you only have one knife for life. That's right. Knife. Um, which I don't know if we can say about a lot of the other ones we've Seriously. looked at so far. Uh, so this was from Curb Rash Kid. That is an awesome <laughs> Curb user. Rash? Curb Rash. Nice. Um, so my granddad, boom, there it is, right? My granddad carried the Buck 110 every single day for almost his entire life. If he could do it, I could do it. That, dude, I hadn't even read this comment. That's exactly... Mic drop. Right? That's exactly <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> you, get the lock, you get a lockback knife. You get, uh, you know, obviously made in America. Great construction, and again, a proven and tried classic. I think out of every knife on the table, this is the most proven pattern, style, oh, type that we have on the table right now. For sure. Um, so a little little hard to argue with this one. Um, hey, if my grandpa could carry one with all the stuff he's seen and been yep. through, yep. and it's lasted that long, I have. I have one of my grandpas, and I have one from my dad. Cool. And I'm not kidding, like, they last forever for a reason, yep. you know? Exactly. Like, they, it's not like my grandpa or my dad was easy on their knife because it was a safe queen. Yep. No, it was a knife and you use it as a tool yep. and you get the job done. Well, that's the thing is, is we're, we're kind of, I mean, we're spoiled in a lot of ways, right? <laughs> but right. we don't got to get into that. <laughs> we're really spoiled because we get knives like the We Arrakis, which is this right. crazy awesome knife um, that we can choose from. And, you know, back in the day it was like, a lot of the same stuff just from different companies, right? Very similar patterns, very similar work use scenarios, just different companies making them. So yep. anyways, yeah, that Buck 110, it's kind of got me, kind of got me thinking, kind of got me thinking. Got you thinking. <laughs> All right, guys, <clears throat> I have an SE3. I personally own an SE3 and I have a very specific opinion about it. And it is a very good, opinion in my opinion <laughs> you, were, you were building that like i have very specific specific, specific opinion but i'm not going to tell you i'm not going to tell you no no i'm not going to tell you because this is an se you guys know se they i mean these are literally they go out and beat the tar out of these they use them for actual survival um they go out and they do classes and stuff like that where they literally are using these knives they're teaching these people how to use these knives for survival. Use them more as a, an all-around tool, I guess you'd say. But the SE3, let's see who we got here. <clears throat> Daily Carry Solutions. Oh, hey, good dude. Daily Carry Solutions, one knife for life. I'm a folding knife guy, but personally, I would have to opt for one of the newer SE3s in S35VN with those contoured handles. Small enough to carry around in a bunch of different ways, but can do everything from outdoor activities to food prep. Plus, no one needs to worry about stuff like gunk and pivots. I gotta be honest, I'm on board. I'm on board with you. I love my SE3. It has been to some of the tallest mountains in Utah and hunted miles of backcountry. I've been through some stuff with that knife and it is amazing. And mine's not even the S35VN one. Mine's just the coated whatever. Yeah, I think 1095 know? is usually Yeah, what something use. like that. Yeah. But man, these new S35VNs are sweet. They're super sweet. They're awesome. <clears throat> well, and to give you guys an idea, we, we sat down with, uh, oh, I just forgot his name, but we sat down with SE at SHOT Show. And we talked about this new knife, because this is a big deal. Contoured handles, S35VN. This is the first knife they've used S35VN on. And uh, we were talking with the guys there at the booth and they were like, yeah, I've never used S35 on anything. Like they're just, because again, hard use, practical knives, they're using 1095. Right. 
Um, and they took this thing out and they tested it to its limits. They actually broke the blade. You guys should check it out here on YouTube. They've got a video about it. And this is something that I love about SE is the integrity, right? They didn't try to say like, oh no, S35, it'll do everything all the time. Every right. You can cut down a mountain with it, right? <laughs> yeah. They went out, they tested it, they broke it and they showed it, right? And it, like just the level of integrity, I just, I love that. And they also have like a no questions asked warranty. Like, which with, is if you huge. ever get the chance to go to a trade show and see their booth, they just have like a wall of destroyed knives. And it's just like, no, just we'll replace it. That's how it works. If it breaks, That's we cool. replace it. That's so, really cool. That's really, rare to find. Yeah, really, really cool. You know, made in America, all that stuff. Really cool company, um, but also great knife. Yep. Yeah. SC3, the S35 goes for 125 on the website. That is. That this was actually one of the knives I was thinking today when Zach was like, "Yeah, one knife for the rest of your life." I was like, "Maybe my SE. I, I've put that thing to work." Yeah, but my my only hesitance with a fixed blade is walking around with a fixed blade all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like I'm not gonna lie. Like you go to like a you go to like a wedding, <clears throat> right? Or you go to church, or you go to your grandma's house. Ah, my grandma wouldn't care. But you know, <laughs> like you you kind of pick these scenarios that you're in sometimes or more often, just depending on on what your lifestyle is, and it's like. Oh, I don't know if, if I don't know about a fixed blade. Right. Yeah. And if it's a big fixed blade, yeah. Every day. Yeah. Oh, it's a it's man. a commitment, right? It's that a commitment. And yeah, I just I love daily carrying fixed blades. I've right. like really gotten into that lately actually. But yeah. I always want to have a knife on me. So I don't know. It's kind of an interesting, interesting deal. Um we got a couple more shout outs. So Sir Wolfenite. Yes. He said, <laughs> shout out to the whole team. I recently bought some new knives and they came early. I love both, and I was surprised at how efficiently they were sent out to me. So Sir Wolf and Knight, again, testament to the great team. Everybody here at Blade HQ is just amazing. Um, and then uh, Nick Martino said, shout out please. Nick Martino, there's your shout out, buddy. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna do one more knife. Kurt's gonna do one more knife, and then we're gonna do some pocket checks. So let us let Emily know in the live chat uh, what you're carrying today. We'll give you guys some shout outs. I've got something kind of cool I'm, got some, I'm excited about. Kurt's got some cool stuff, and he's got a super secret that we're not supposed to talk about. We're gonna do it anyways, because we're live. Nobody can stop us. <laughs> All right, so my next knife, before we do a pocket dump, um, is a ZT. So this comes from Patrick Pilkerton, and he said, if I had to choose only one, definitely the ZT0562 carbon fiber. Absolute beast of a knife has never let me down, no matter what the task. And you know, we were just lauding cold steel for being hard use, you know, hardcore knives. ZT's right in that same realm, man. Yeah. So with this, you know, you get the uh, 20 CV blade, obviously you get the carbon fiber front, um, you know, uh, full titanium construction with the stainless steel insert on that frame lock. You've got an overlock, over lock bar, over travel lock bar. Guys, I'm not gonna say it right, but you have this thing so that your lock bar doesn't go too far. <laughs> And then a really sleek, nice, deep carry pocket clip. So um, it is really hard to go wrong with a ZT. And the right. cool thing that ZT does, so with Cold Steel, I mean, Cold Steel has a bunch of different size knives, of course, right? right? With the ones that I gravitate to, they're usually the bigger ones. Right. Um, but what ZT does really cool is maybe, maybe even a little bit better than Cold Steel. I don't know if that's true. I'm gonna think about that. I think though, maybe a little bit better than Cold Steel, they do a good job at putting this much utility and gnarliness in a really pocket friendly thing. And it's it's nice stuff. Yeah, and that's and that's what you're gonna get with with ZT is it's more slender. But I think that's where I'm going with this, right? Is there there the ZT knives usually are not as big as some of those bigger cold steel knives that I gravitate right. to. But what ZT does really well is it's just this gnarly hard use knife hard use knife, but thinner. Right? right. So I think that's what I'm going for is that thinner profile is something that really attracts me to the to the idea of being able to carry a ZT and of carrying a ZT for life. Now, how do you feel about the carbon fiber front? <sighs> Guys, like, I gotta carbon be, fiber for, for life. This I is gotta be honest. I think carbon fiber can be a little slippery. Mm -hmm. I, you, I mean, if you're working any kind of, okay, the other day I repaired a sprinkler in my backyard and I'm not kidding, if I would have had a carbon fiber knife, one, I probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> Two, I, I, I don't know. It's just there's too much potential of it getting slit and and using that. I actually used my SC3. Yeah. Because of the micarta. Yeah, the micarta. And it's fixed blades. So and it's fixed blades, right? so yeah, I can yeah. just get on it. Yeah, no, that's that's but, a good testament to that. But I mean, here's the thing: is I know ZT can do it, and I know it can handle it. But the carbon fiber for the rest of my life, probably not. Yeah. And I'll have to say, I've been 
slowly getting converted, and this is why. I wanna say it was the CRKT Sketch. We did a sprint run on one of those. And um, it was a carbon fiber, shred carbon fiber. I actually really love the look of shred carbon fiber, but it had a texture to it. It's like they'd roughed it up. Ugh. I was into it. I was super into really? it. Really? Was it like chalkboard? Yeah. No, 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 no. It was like, it was, it, it felt like a mixture. Literally, it was a mixture between like Micarta and G10. What? And I was just like, dude, I like this. It felt warm like Micarta, yeah. but kind of grippy like G10. That's cool. Dude, I was pretty into it. And so like, we're actually trying to work on some exclu other exclusives right now. And I keep telling Justin, the product manager, I'm like, bro, get some more of that. Get some more of that get grippy some more carbon of that fiber. <laughs> Cause hey, I missed if... the sketch. Everybody else bought the sketch. Right. I didn't get one. And so now I really, I want a daily one to see if I actually like it as much as I thought I would. Well, and I, I have held a few knives that are, they have a textured carbon fiber. Yeah. Like it's been milled out with yeah. like little grooves and stuff. And that is actually really nice, mm -hmm. but plain flat carbon fiber, yeah, a little slippery for me. Yeah, and we does we has a couple knives where they do a really good. They have yeah, kind of a slippy carbon fiber too, but they have a couple textured ones that are really yep. good. All right, so before we do a pocket check, guys, if you're live, you want a pocket check? Shout out now's the time. Kurt's gonna do this knife, and then we're pocket checking. So let's do this thing. All right, guys, I got the Kershaw Blur as the next knife over here. Let's see, Trenton. Kershaw Blur, been one of my main EDCs for a couple years now. I don't know why I just did that accent. That was super weird. Sounds but, like Trenton. But it was organic. It was and organic. I feel yeah. Maybe you connected with him like in I his soul. I did. I did. <laughs> we connected. Thanks, Trenton. Okay. Uh, for a couple years now, I found it to be a workhorse, especially with my with the new Lynch Clip deep pocket clip mm -hmm. I have on it. I've used it for everything from opening boxes to doing yard work with it. It's one of those more underappreciated knives from what I have found, but I love it. I will tell you right now, I love the Blur. If I were to buy a Kershaw knife right here today, it'd probably be the Launch 11, but my number two choice would be the Blur. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I, I love the Launch 11. It's, it's just it's so good. cute. It's so good. I love it. But the Blur, <laughs> this thing is actually a hard use knife. Um, I mean, Ken Onion, you got the, the assisted, speed safe assisted from Ken Onion. The only gripe I have is you, it's a, it's a two-way pocket clip, tip up or tip down, but man, if this is in your pocket, look, just bear with me. If this is in your pocket and you've got, if you can do that without ripping the papers, I'm gonna be seriously impressed. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Oh, boom, like, there it is. For a bigger knife, I want it to be down in my pocket. Mm, I got you. You know, I even this, just trying to, if I have something on my belt or if I'm reaching into my pocket for something else, constantly having to go past that, where if it sits deeper, it's just, it's a part of the pocket. Like it, it almost, the pocket lip covers the top of the knife almost. Yeah. So I like this. It's a sweet knife. I mean, S30V, it's got this uh, track tech i think is what it's called um it it's basically it's like rubbery grip tape mm -hmm. All, like the same type of stuff you'd see at a like a track yeah no it feels yeah like a track or like if you like grew up with those playgrounds that had like right. asphalt that wasn't like the soft asphalt yeah yeah that stuff yeah yeah so for a workhorse for the rest of your life plus it's got that fidget factor with that speed safe assisted opener oh, see and that makes it's it a, a good one dude that makes it a hard it's a good knife but that makes it a hard pass for me man i yeah one knife for the rest of my life there's been some assisted knives that i've been like okay like i could do this but like not for one life for the rest of my life okay no nah well <laughs> trenton i'm glad we connected and uh yeah the blur man 79 dollars on the site cool. so all right we'll get some pocket checks now okay i'm gonna i'll do a couple shout outs and then kurt you're gonna go okay okay all right so uh gunfighter 314 can I get a shout out from my boys Seth and Luke? We were in the storefront around New Year's and got to meet you guys, talk Star Wars and take photos. Thanks, Zach and Kurt. Do you remember those dudes? Heck yeah. And we were talking about uh, uh, the Star Wars land at Disneyland, whatever it's called. Yeah. Star Wars experience or whatever. Um, those guys were awesome. Yeah, they yeah. were way cool. I, I love, guys, I'm a nerd on a lot of things. I'm kind of weird, right? Like I can nerd out on comic books just as easily I can nerd out on motorcycles just as easily like, as I can nerd out on like, you know, philosophical discourses like Descartes. He's He has like the, <laughs> in a good way, he has the geek vibe, 
But he's also like a hard-nosed truck driver that would <laughs> smash you type of thing. But anyways, anyway. shout out to Luke and Seth. <laughs> it was great talking to those dudes. Glad you guys are tuning in. Super awesome. Heck yeah. Um, let's see, Or Volpert. I'm not even sure what that is, but I'm kind of into that name. He said, he just bought the Fox Radius, and can I please get a shout out? Uh, the more ease you add to a request, the oh, yeah. more likely it is to get on uh, Knife Banner. <laughs> um, Fox Radius is super rad. I really it's like that knife. It's a good one. I really like that knife. Um, especially when you get used to the mechanism. Right. It's a just a beautiful fidget knife, and it's just a really cool new way to open and close knives, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Frederico Mata says, I'm carrying the Kershaw Emerson CQC 6K in D2 steel. It's the best knife I've ever owned. That is a cool one. I need to pick one of those up because I want to carry something with a wave. I've never carried a knife with a wave. I have tried every time I get a wave knife that I'm supposed to take a photo for it. Yeah. I put it in my pocket and I try it and I always feel like as soon as that wave like pulls it open, yeah. I feel like I have so much resistance in my hand like crap, if I'm not holding that, I'm I'm going to drop that. <laughs> so I'm like <laughs> I'm either going to whack somebody or I'm going to cut my leg as it falls down. I'll oh. tell you what. What if I buy a CQC6 right after this? You gonna buy a CQC6? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I will watch you enjoy okay, yours. Okay, perfect. What if I buy one? Will you carry it for a while? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm gonna Absolutely. buy a CQC6 literally right after this thing, and uh, me and Kurt will carry them and see what we think. Sounds good. <laughs> I love it. No, I won't. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's just not my jam. All right. Uh, okay. Grumpy Gu Grumpy Grunt says, I'm carrying the Wii Roxy 4 that I won on the last WoW. Blade HQ, yes. you guys rock. Yes. Dude, Dude, I'm so stoked. That's, that's so rad. That's cool. That's way cool. So, like I said at the beginning of this thing, if you don't know why Wii sponsoring this is important, maybe you know why now. Yeah. Hold on till the hey, end. Hang on. All right. What are you carrying today, Kurt? I have got two. Mm -hmm. One, I've been carrying my street scalpel. And, oh my gosh, I love this thing. Uh, dude, it's a beast. I'm not kidding. Like, I thought I would have to be a little careful with the tip because it gets so thin, but, dude, I was in the, my backyard. I'm not kidding. Me and my kid, we were playing, uh, what's that, in Mumbly Peg? <laughs> we were playing Mumbly Peg. Don't yes. try this at home. <laughs> uh, me and my son were playing Mumbly Peg, and once you got the, the right grip on the micarta dude every time and in utah i don't know if you guys know this but in utah depending on where you live there's a lot of rocks mm -hmm. in the dirt and that is my yard it's just rocks i'm under the grass yeah, yeah but it's yeah. like very hard compact yeah, this, rocky this was dirt. like a huge prehistoric lake bed for like tens of thousands right. of years so there's just rock like lake sediment everywhere. yeah all that yeah, really yeah. hard sediment anyway I'm stoked on this knife, man. That's awesome. <laughs> I've been I've been carrying it. I've been scout carrying it. I had to adjust the loops on the sheath. Where do I have it? Right here. I shortened them up to match my belt. And I'm not kidding. That thing when it's on my belt, it doesn't even budge when I pull the knife out of the sheath. Cool. So, street scalpel, tops. Love it. All right, and you've got a secret. I you do. have to keep it a secret, or we're both gonna get fired. So you can only show as much as we said we could show. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Are you guys, hey, you guys better be ready. Are you guys ready? You guys better be ready. <laughs> That's all. That's all I can show. That's I all will, I can show. I will say this though. If you want to know what that is, oh my gosh, this is probably my next next to the Chavez, or maybe like equal to the Chavez. Different different knives. Totally but, different. But equal knives. to the excitement I had when the Chavez knives first hit. Literally, this is like my favorite project we've ever done at Blade HQ. I, I think it's one of the best exclusives yep. we've ever made. It's absolutely incredible. So here's here's the deal on this, guys. This Friday, be on the website. You'll see. Sign up for our email list. You'll see. Follow us on Instagram. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I you, promise it's worth it. And I also one. will promise we probably don't have enough. But I I can't right. and I can't promise this, but I'm pretty sure we'll do a second run. I'm pretty sure we're gonna do a second run because I don't think I don't think we're gonna have enough for how good this is. Right, it's yeah, a good one. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. <laughs> secret secrets. We're gonna totally get in trouble for that. But guys, we love you and we had to bring it to you. We had to. <laughs> All right, uh, real quick, let's uh, let's finish a couple uh, call outs here and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll blow through some more knives. Um, let's see, Kent Ballard, Blade HQ, packing the sheep's foot proper and the Urban EDC Super Burlap Micarta Kaiser Feist. Cool, good nice. game, man. 
I carry a proper every once in a while. I like it. Uh, Drew L is carrying Spyderco Canis. I keep seeing it, but I haven't touched it yet. Have you touched I, one? I touched yet? one today. Yeah. I touched one today. We were doing photos, and uh, it was kind of surprising. Yeah. I kind of kind of dig it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to grab That's one. That's a good and, one. And check it out. And then, I don't know. If, I think it's Nefirej. Nefirej. He said he has a Leatherman Free P4 in his pocket from you guys. Waiting on my Benchmade Hidden Canyon Hunter that I ordered last night from the site. Nice. Nice. Good carry, man. If you guys don't know, almost all of the Benchmade Hunt Knives are on huge sale right now. Huge sale. So huge. buy yourself a Benchmade Hunt Knife. It does, you don't even have to use it for hunting. There's great fixed plates. I like, may or may not have picked up on that train and yeah. got a couple. Yeah, Kurt definitely did. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So we'll do a quick uh, pocket dump for me. I got my normal pockets. I got my Phoenix Light. I got my Victorinox Compact. I've got my Pete's Pirate Life Big Idea Design Pen but I bought a new knife today, guys, and I'm so stoked. So if you guys have been watching Knife Banner, I don't remember which one it was even on. I don't know. But I handled this SR1 Lite, and I was freaking out about this thing. I was so stoked. And so I bought one today. Heck yeah, Because I had not? to. So yeah, just the sweet knife. I think it's like 60 bucks or something. Super affordable, very thick stock. Dude, that thing's, a, yeah. it's basically a leaf spring. Yeah, no, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and here's the thing, <laughs> it's a cold steel. It's a tough knife, right? So, of course, at lunch, I was throwing it into stuff because that's what you do with a cold steel when you first buy it. <laughs> so you guys, I don't know if Carson can get in on this, uh, this, this, not the tip, but the tip of the Tonto right here. You can see how it's rounded. Yeah, so I threw it at something to stick it in and it literally, head over heels tumbled for like 12 feet, perfectly. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, it was perfect. Like in, it was on the grass doing this for like 12 feet. And I just watched it, I was like, how is it doing that? <laughs> and then boom, right onto some concrete. Oh my and gosh. I was just like, gosh dang it. So I had it for less than an hour and I already muffed up the dead <laughs> it. So I'll fix that, don't worry, I'll fix that. But uh, yeah, super excited about this. Heck yeah, that's super cool, excited. man. Pocket clip's a little tight out of the box. Okay. I'm not stoked on that. So I'll have to loosen that up a little bit. I mean, you can see it even took some pocket with it just now. But uh, eh, besides that, it's, it's everything I was stoked on when I when we played with it that one time. That's so, cool. Anyways, that's, that's my new cool. knife. Super exciting. New knife day is always exciting. Heck yeah. yeah. Why exciting. not? All right. Um, so you did a fixed blade. I'm going to do a fixed blade real quick. <clears throat> so uh, next up in knives, if you could only have one knife for the rest of your life, next up is the Benchmade Nimra Nimravis. I'm not going to lie. Never touched this knife in my entire life. <laughs> I have never even heard of this Benchmade knife until literally just right now. So Riley King dot JPEG, great name. <laughs> uh, Benchmade Nimravis, one heck of a fixed blade, serrated and sharp, can take a beating and still keep going. Been on a bit of a fixed blade kick recently. Fixed blades are awesome. This thing is beautiful though. Like I don't know, I know you can't see it as well. I can't see it as well. Yeah, but yeah. and yeah. I need I need everybody out there to see it. So we'll right. have, we'll look at this one afterwards. Oh, yeah. Um, but kind of like an infidel, you see like the- Yeah, it's super right? textured. Yeah, yeah, kind of like some infidel texturing here. Um, obviously this is the combo blade. Uh, nice heavy jimping across the back right there. Um, it's a it's a, it's a a CPM 150 or 154CM blade, which is interesting. Um, I don't know. It keeps it really good and feared, field serviceable, right? Um, right. Because recently Benchmade's done some M4 and stuff, some <clears throat> S90V, which is, I love. Good luck sharpening that in the field, though. Right. Right. Um, and this thing goes for one seventy eight fifty on the website, just like a big gnarly fixed blade. And it comes with like a really good like tactical, you know, you can mount this sheath however you want, wherever you want, and uh, yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. Like I said, I've never touched this one before, but uh, pretty dang neat. I I like some tactical esque knives, but. They're not my first go-to. Yeah, I'm with you. Oh, something I do love though, uh, because I'm an idiot and I never put my knives in my fixed blade sheath right the first time. <laughs> it does have an ambi sheath. So that's actually oh, that's huge. Cool. That's a huge win for me. That's cool. Because I don't have to think about it. <laughs> so anyways, cool knife, made from Benchmade. Uh, again, 178.50 on the website. And that's the <clears throat> Benchmade Nimravis. I'm probably saying that wrong, but literally the first time I've even heard of this knife. So, cool one. I've got I've got one that got dropped off by the elf. Ooh, okay, let's do one of those. I've got the Kaiser Zugang. I've never held this knife before, but it's the Zugang. Is that it's, a new? I think that's a new. Ooh, I might be misspeaking. I don't know if it's new. new or not. Mm, sorry to interrupt you while you were looking. No, at yeah, it. you're good. You're good. <laughs> it's S35E steel. You got the Warncliffe blade. It's $120 on the site. I mean, look at this thing. 
It's smooth. It's nice. It's Kaiser. Mm -hmm. If you if you've held a Kaiser, you know what it is. Man, uh, there's one thing that I do like about Kaisers, and they do this on a handful of their knives. The Gemini was the first one that I was like, oh, this like contoured, smooth, but you can still like really grip it because it's thick enough, it wraps in your fingers. That's cool. I don't know about the blade shape for me personally, but Devin Patterson hmm. loves it. Well, Devin, that's, that's an interesting blade shape. Again, your forever knife. Forever? You're never gonna have another knife. We were talking about this earlier, so, so our, our, our buddy Talon Sai and Peter McKinnon, they did a thing where they were like, oh, we're gonna carry one knife for a year. I think it lasted like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I might be misspeaking. I didn't give Talon, I should have called Talon before we did this, uh, but I think it lasted for like a week. It was, right. like, it was like, it didn't work, right? Yeah. Um, huh, interesting knife. Yeah. Cool design though. The Zoo Gang. Yeah. All right, um, so one that I have that comes as no surprise these are still out of stock, but there's so many of you guys wanted to see this that we're gonna put it on the table. I will tell you that we have a actual boatload of knives of this VV Elementum coming. And they're gonna be here very soon. So like a physical boat. Like an actual, like they're, a boat is gonna pull up to Blade HQ. I like that. <laughs> I hope it's Bodie McBoatface. It's gonna be Bodie McBoatface. Um, no, we have a ton coming and we have even more on order. So I promise you guys, once we start getting them back in, Hopefully, they won't go out of stock like this again. That's the hope, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but anyway, Civivi Elementum, uh, you guys know everything about this knife. We love this knife. We haven't been able to talk about it as much because it has been out of stock for so long, um, but we will be having more. So, One Knife for Life, this is from Amber Hill, 1990. One Knife for Life, I would choose the Civivi Elementum. My husband gifted me the Elementum with black G10 scales and a satin D2 steel blade. It has ball bearing pivot, making it smooth to open. It has a deep pocket clip, which I like in, on a knife. I've fallen in love with this knife. That's that's I couldn't I couldn't say it better. That's cool. G10, D2, deep carry pocket clip, incredible knife. We have them in. Uh, we'll have some in brass. We'll have some in copper, like we did before. There might be a, one in my car deck. I don't know. I don't know. There might be. Oh man. <laughs> don't there get might be me some excited. special more Blade HQ exclusive stuff coming our way very soon. Um, but yeah, there's not much to say about this because we have talked about this knife ad infinitum for good reason. So, Civivi Elementum, we will have more very soon. Sign up for the wish list, sign up for the email list, follow us on Instagram, you guys know the drill, and that's how you can keep up to date on those knives, because I promise when we get them, we will shout it from the mountaintops. I have another elf knife. Ooh, okay, what do we got? The elf brought me this, it's the Kershaw Highball, hmm. and this one is, I don't know if it's Rio Van or Rid Van that is wanting to see this. Oh. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm glad you wanted to see it because it's it's actually a pretty cool knife. Um, Kershaw, right, made in America, awesome. Here's the interesting part. It's a frame lock, but it has no flipper, no anything, but it does have this, I don't know if you can get that, Carson, but this little... It's got a nail nick? It's got a nail nick, but it like catches the, the pad of your finger. Interesting. So that one, it's interesting. It's almost like a like a lockable slip joint. It feels slip joint to me, right. like grabbing yeah, the blade, the two hand joining. open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 100%. But the highball, it's a good one, and uh, 41 bucks on the side. Now you said, so Kershaw does make a lot of stuff in the United States. Is that one made in the United I States? I don't, I'm not 100% okay. on this one. I'm and not that, sure. That's my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, man. Yeah, math. Doing it live, man. It's been, it's been a little while since we've been in here live, man. I a little flustered. Here we are. You know, <laughs> check the website for the do, stats, guys. Do it live. Do it live. I can't Kershaw speak highball. on it. I'm not sure. Now, however, a knife that is for sure made in the United States uh, for our next knife, you can only have one knife. Is the Benchmade Mini Grip Tillion. Now, this one it comes in 20 CV. It's got the G10 handles. Nice deep carry pocket clip from Benchmade. Obviously the access lock, um, and it's got a hole opening, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, so you don't see that, you see that on the Griptilian series, but you don't right. see it in a lot of Benchmade knives. Um, so nice little carry, and that's kind of some of the stuff that I'm noticing. My knife, well, I, had some, I had some smaller knives as well, but I think this is kind of a smaller knife for a one knife, and it and it goes, man, I'm really glad, uh, Irod, is it Irod? I, yeah, that dude? Yeah. I'm really glad that we got to him first. It wasn't planned that way, it just happened. Um, because do you really need, let us know, like do you really need like a gnarly huge fixed blade if that's the only knife that you're gonna have? 
Um, Cause I think for most of us it's, I mean, even if I think about even in like, a, I've done a lot of hitchhiking, I've done a lot of bumming around right. and stuff. I usually just have a folder in my pocket. It'll open a can of beans. It'll, you know what I mean? Like, right. It'll do all the things I need it to do, even in a situation where I'm not just sitting on my couch. Right. right. So I don't know, kind of interesting. But anyways, uh, mini grip Tillion tried and true classic, super great knife. And uh, let's see here. Tim Broth eight. He said, hard to say, but when true, hard to say, what would be your one knife for life? Um, but when thinking about it, I've used my knives all folders uh, for in the past. I think I've used my Benchmade Mini Grip Tillion. I think it means the most there. I might have misread it. I've done yard work, open packages, prying with it. Ooh, it's prying. Careful. Careful. And so much more, and it hasn't let me down yet. My collection consists of a Cry Kershaw Cryo D2, talked about there, a Pillage, great knife, and the Mini Grip. Oh, and a CF Elite Bug Out with a Fox Baby Core and a Boker Stubby Strike on the way. Nice. Dude, this guy knows what's up. Heck this? yeah. Timber Broth 8, he knows what's up. Yeah. If you guys haven't checked out that Baby Core yet, it's pretty cool. <sighs> it's a cool knife, it's a really cool knife. But anyways, um, so yeah, super rad knife, mini grip, and uh, <laughs> knife for life, smaller knife. So I've got one up here next. It's an interesting perspective, which I didn't really think of because I'm thinking of my Li mm -hmm. my knife, what's, yeah. what my knife would be. But there is a man named Cap'n Jack 07, and he likes the Salt Native 5. I actually understand this one. Okay, so. I understand this one big time. Here's what he says. He says, I would go with the Native 5 Salt, no serrations, because I live by the water and the Native is a beast. And I actually really like this knife. It, dude, it fits well in my hands. The I would own a Native 5, if it was a compression lock. Ah, uh, interesting. I'm not a huge fan of lockbacks just because the two-handed, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you can like do it one-handed, like brush it up against your mm, jeans or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sketchy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm not crazy about a lockback, but the Native 5 is cool. And especially depending on where you're at, your region and what you, like what elements and stuff you deal every day. I mean, like whether you're in the city or whether you're in the on a ranch or, you know, maybe you're, Right here, like maybe you live in Florida off the coast and you know, there's a lot of options. And that's something that I didn't really take into consider. I was like, what do I want? Yeah, well Where, in Utah, water's not a problem. Right. Are we three years in a row, best drought ever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag drought life. <laughs> Hashtag drought life. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a cool knife, four-way reversible. It's that salt series. Yeah, you know, honestly, I get that one. Cause when we're talking about that knife is, it's almost the perfect combination of a really good steel, a nice compact carry, super strong locking mechanism. Like it's got pretty much everything. I'm not a huge fan of the FRN scales. That's where that's where it like drops off just a Me hair. either. But yeah. I will say, if you got this knife wet, you got that grip, oh, yeah. man. Spyderco has that lightweight grip. They got that down. Yeah. I'm not kidding, that thing. It's not gonna move in your hand. And here's the thing, there's a, there's a lot of diving knives, there's a lot of fishing knives, there's a lot of that. I consistently hear over and over and over again, salt series, salt series, salt series, salt series. Right. There's a reason, right? There's a reason that that, 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 that's, that, that series is so popular for those, those events. Right. right, oh yeah, I mean, yeah. They're, they're some of the best. If you're near water, yeah. you know. We had, we had somebody best. else comment on that knife on YouTube. Uh, I think the username was like Krad. And um, she was like, she was like, I don't know if I'm a dude. I just want to clarify, everybody's a dude. Everybody's a dude. Everybody's a dude. What's up, dude? Yeah, it's everybody's yeah, a dude. That's, that's how I live my life. <laughs> that's probably just because we're West Coast boys. Let's uh, be honest. I don't know, seriously. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Native 5, the 130 bucks on the site. Uh, check out the, all the salt. We, we did a salt video forever ago, and we tested the steel in the salt water here in the Great Salt Lake, which is supposed to be like three times more than the average salt water. So anyway, check out that video. The salt is pretty cool. And Cap'n Jack 07. I also love that he's a Cap'n. I just caught that actually. Yeah. Cap'n yeah. Jack. Yeah, he definitely needs a salt knife. Absolutely. All right, um, we are, ooh. So normally we run wild for about an hour. We're just over. Oh man. How many more knives you got left? I have two. Two? I got two. You wanna speed run these things? Let's do it. Well, not speed run, but we'll run through them. Yeah, let's, okay, let's cool. burn them. And guys, we have a sweet knife giveaway coming too. So we're gonna show you a couple more knives for life. This is an important topic that needs attention. Oh, absolutely. Right? We, we gotta give this the proper treatment. All right, um, so from DJW7, he said the Buck 110 Slim Pro. 
So light enough for EDC, big enough for all hunting and most bushcraft applications, great all around blade shape, forever warranty, great steel. But if we're talking survival situations, he's saying a traditional K bar or buck night hawk would be tough to beat. Yeah. And that's the case is, it's like I said earlier, if we're talking your one survival knife for life, fixed blade every time, no questions asked. But if it's just like the knife that I'd have to carry forever, right? folder, I think I'd go folder. Um, so yeah, so anyways, Buck 110 Slim Hunter goes for $89.99 on the website. This one, I, this is a, yeah, it's a micarta, not a burlap, but, a, but it's just a, a, a micarta, nice deep carry pocket clip, not a huge fan. It's... I saw this at SHOT Show a little while ago and I was, I was interested by it, but the more that I've handled it, not a huge fan of how wide the pocket clip is. It's a bulky is. pocket clip. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely like a little loud. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and if, apart from my Chavez, <laughs> I don't like a lot of loud pocket clips, personally. Right. Um, and this has got a CPM S30V blade. So, I mean, folder, lockback, we've already praised that the regular 110, right? I mean, hard to beat, man. It and is. it comes in my carta. It's pretty hard, nice. Hard to beat, hard to beat. All right, guys, I have a Benchmade Freak, and this is the Super Freak. I was gonna say, that's no regular it's Freak. It's the Super Freak. Okay, <laughs> I actually have two comments asking for the Freak. Shane Sevort says, Benchmade Super Freak, great blade steel, good ergonomics, and it's pretty, it looks pretty good too. You know, I agree. Let's go to the next comment. This is from Grant You sound Sims. like a professional like comment. I don't know, like a professional comment person. I don't know what that would be called. <laughs> let's go to the next comment. And I expect you to like lick your finger and like let's, push let's your go glasses to the phone. on. <laughs> Grant Sims, Benchmade Freak. It can stand up to anything that is thrown at it and it looks good while doing it. And I 100% agree mm. because I own this knife and I use it. I use it. I use my knives, guys. And mine has some little wear and tear on the blade, but I just put a new edge on it yesterday, and holy crap, I'm telling you, it's it's hot. Yeah. M4 steel, you got your G10, you got your red liners and barrel spacers. And M4 steel. Dude, I'll tell and you. And there's M4 steel. Wait, what's, what's the blade steel? You know what? It's M4. <laughs> That's what it is. M4 is pretty sweet. The red, the red kills it for me. What? Yeah. Too loud? Too loud, man. Too loud. Too loud, I can't do it. I like a little uh, splash. Yeah, you do. You I do. do. I like a little splash. <laughs> but 191 on the website. Uh, honestly, guys, this thing is sweet. I really like this knife. It's the biggest, maybe not the biggest folder I have, but it is one of the biggest folders. And ham approved. Ham approved. Ham approved. We need a sticker that's just like a <laughs> ham approved. Ham approved. <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, it's bench made and it's a super freak M4 steel. Ooh. Cool. It's a good one. All right, so my last one that I have on the table, yeah, my last one that I have on the table is the Gerber LMF2 Infantry. Yet another fixed blade I've never handled before. I've never had that one either. Yeah, I mean, normally it's the strong arm right. that we're talking about when we're talking about Gerber fixed blades. So let's see here. So this is from William Mitchell. He said, Gerber LMF2, Lynn Thompson put it to best? Maybe test? Oh, Lynn Thompson put it best. You can skin a mouse with a big blade, or you can skin an elephant. A small blade can skin a mouse, but can't skin an element or an elephant. The Gerber LMF2 could do it all. And that is a philosophy that I like. And this is the reason that I've kind of gotten into carrying a bigger knife from time to time. This is the reason that I've gotten into carrying fixed blades a little bit more, is they can do everything. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like they really can. That is the cool thing about them. So really neat knife. Guys, I don't know a lot about this thing. So 420C steel. Um, this is probably, yeah, let's see. It's some sort of a nylon, rubberized GFN. GFN, haha. It's a GFN uh, handle on this thing. Full tang, obviously. Really interesting design. Um, and then it comes with a really nice, just what, what do you expect from Gerber? Just a really nice, uh, tough sheath. I keep forgetting where the camera angle is. Cause right. Guys, it's it's a crazy mess in here. You wouldn't even believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, and this one particularly has the combo blade. And I think if you're talking one knife for life, uh, combo blade's definitely not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea to have to have a little bit of that. And this goes for $82.50. That's that's a good deal. Dude, I'm holding this thing. This is a chunk of knife. It for looks $82. big. Yeah. It looks big. That's that's a killer deal. That's We're gonna cool. have to start looking at this thing more because I, I it's been it hasn't been on my radar. Maybe we need oh, to Did uh, I do it wrong? We maybe we should visit a uh, 
fixed blades that we don't necessarily touch all the time. That could be cool. You know what I mean? Guys, let us know. If you guys want to see unusual fixed blade video, that would be pretty fun. That'd be cool. And we try to we try to branch out when we do fixed blade stuff and look at different things. Right. Um, but yeah, that'd be pretty neat to, to do some stuff. All right, what do you got? I have a fixed blade. I have the White, Re mm. the White River Firecraft. This is the C F C five Firecraft five. Dude, do we have those in stock? Does uh, the paper say it's in stock right now? No, because I'm gonna go buy them all. <laughs> uh, yes, they're in stock as of right now. I I will be clear about this. I don't know how many we have. These never stay in stock. They never this is do. shocking to actually have one to put on the table. Uh, right. If you guys want one, literally jump and go get it right now. I'm, I'm not even no kidding. guarantees. I'm not even kidding. I've wanted this knife for years, mm -hmm. and. Every time they come in, I get a little notification. Uh, Justin over in receiving, he, he used to be in receiving, he'd always hit me up and say, hey, these are back. And I'd be like, sweet, okay, I'll get one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That, I'm telling you, this is, oh, this is the knife, guys. I love this knife. You got S35VN steel, you got micarta, you got these cool little orange liners. Pop a color I don't Pop mind. Pop I, don't, color. I don't mind it. I don't nice. mind it. Nice. Nice. <laughs> this one, guys, I really, I really like this knife. Look at the thick blade stock on there. That is sweet. And you get a lot of blade. Oh my gosh. I'm not, I'm falling in love with this thing more <laughs> as I hold it. Uh, it's cool. It's got the, uh, the fire, the bow drill, choil, or hole, or bow drill, whatever you want. What's that? What would I call that? Yeah, bow, the bow drill divot, hole. Whatever. So yeah. the cool thing about the bow drill is you can just put it in the sheath and and you're holding your blade, you get a big nice purchase on there, you know? So it's awesome. You got your fire starter. I really love the leather sheath that you can get on these, mm -hmm. but practicality, Kydex is where it's at. Especially for me, because it's got the the loose the dangle. The dangle ring, yep. whatever you want to call that. What would you call that? What it's, is this it's, called? No, it's literally called the dangle. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I like that because when you get in the truck or you jump in a car or whatever, it just like goes to mm -hmm. its place where it isn't in the way. <laughs> Guys, I think Kurt's gonna. I'm gonna be buying a Emerson Wave knife tonight. I think Kurt might be buying a Firecraft knife. <laughs> oh my gosh! Just that they're in stock really blows my mind. <laughs> if I were to choose a knife for the rest of my life and it was a fixed blade yeah right there <laughs> and you're on the old knife and i'm on table. the old knife so table. jamie can't hurt you so i can do this <laughs> jamie's over there just with the scowl i can't believe it but anyway i you know what i know that carrying a big fixed blade every day would get old uh -huh. but maybe if you used it enough you know, and I think that it really comes down to uh, where you where you live at, what kind of things you're into. Mm -hmm. Like for me in Utah, I've got a big backyard. Um, I hunt, I go camping. I do like, like, yeah, I could go camping in a camp trailer or I could go and sleep in like a sleeping bag up in the top of the mountains. Or you can go real camping. I can go real camping, <laughs> right. And to me, I think that I would choose this knife. Mm. It's a lot of knife. It and I might knife. regret that when I'm like 30 years down the road yeah, and I'm yeah. pissed and I just don't want to throw it or I don't want to carry it anymore because <laughs> right. it's so heavy. <laughs> but man, this knife, talk about a do it all. It hits all my, my, my spots. Yeah. It's got good steel, that's 35. My Carta, an excellent sheath, dude. Dude, I, I haven't landed. I haven't landed on one night for life off the table. But I, I, I would say this and the bug out would be would right. Does your does interesting? Because at the beginning you were like, no bug out, no. no, well, no. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> as we were going through the live, yeah. you know, I I keep hearing like, well, you know, you don't actually baton right. every day. I'm like, yeah, I'm Firecraft Five. I'm baton this crap. Heck yeah, it's so tough. But then I'm thinking about, I'm like. Okay, maybe I need to think realistically instead of like, ooh, this is fun, I get to pick a knife. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know sure. what I mean? So. I, if I had to pick one on the table, like between the two tables, 
If I had to, if I had to pick one, guys, and I, I don't have an, I don't have a full answer for this, but I, I can narrow it down for what's on the table. I think, dude, I think I buck one ten. That's you, man. That's what I'm saying. Is like, like I said, this knife, this knife. I mean, not only just in my family, like everybody, right? Oh, Everywhere. absolutely. This knife has just proven itself, right? And I'm a big numbers guy, right? Like I'm a big like, oh yeah, like okay, prove it, right? Like prove yeah. it. Yeah. And and this knife has proved it that if you were gonna carry one knife for life, no problems. Right, all right. And you I get that buck warranty. Agree. They're made up in Idaho. If I had a problem. I'll just drive up to Idaho. Right, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> and you want to know what I love about this choice is it's not the auto. Yeah. If I were to choose an auto or a non-auto 110, I would 100% choose the non-auto. That's a personal yep. preference. But to me, in my head, it makes more sense. It's like, oh, it's simple, simplified. Mm -hmm. All it does is open and shut. One lock on the back. Mm, done. Yep. Well, and that's know. it. If it was one knife for life, <clears throat> this would be the one. But what Buck 110 do I carry all the time? My Buck 110 Auto, because right. I have 100 other knives sitting <laughs> in my, right, I can carry whatever right. I want, right? right. Um, but no, if I, had, if I had to choose on the spot, because we're already over time. Oh, way over <laughs> if time. If I had to choose over, uh, one, one on the spot, Buck 110. That's the one. Oh, that's man. the one. It's just proven, man. I feel like I need to actually commit. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've committed to that that firecraft. I, I honestly, I think you've done it. I think for me and what I enjoy and where I live and the things that I'm into, firecraft. Boom. FC there we go. Five. That's me. All right. Okay, guys. We have went over a little bit. Hopefully, if you're watching live or if you're not watching live, hopefully it's at least been fun. If you had to choose one knife on the table, let us know. And if the knife that you would choose for your one knife for the rest of your life isn't on the table, let us know as well. Of course, we want to know. Um, we always love reading through the comments and seeing what you guys carry, seeing why you would carry it. So just fill those comments up. Let's see what they're about. Um, we. We. This this thing is sponsored by We. So we're going to get tricky here, guys. So we have a camera that's trying to give you close-ups. And then we have a camera that's trying to give you long view. So I'm going to be your long view, and Kurt's going to be your close-up because he has the giveaway knife over there. So uh, as always, Week 1 Wednesday do is I? brought to you by... You do. You do. It's right there. Oh. Yeah, so we, Week 1 Wednesday is brought to you by We Knives. We love the people over at We Knives. Blade HQ loves the people over at We Knives. Sometimes that we, 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 you know, we, we, <laughs> we, we, uh, and as a result, they always give us a knife to give away for you guys because they love the knife community. And this, uh, this round, we are giving away a We Arrakis. Now, I'm having a hard time seeing the finish. On those ones over this there, I think it's the champagne bronze. one. The champagne. Yes. Yep. The so. champagne one is the one we're giving away. <laughs> right here. So that's the one we're giving away. Uh, if Emmeline is still in the right place, she will be dropping a link in the live chat, and she will also be dropping a link in the comments and pinning it to the top. So um, if you're not seeing it, hit refresh. You'll get it. Click that link. Go sign up to win yourself a free We Arrakis from our good friends over at We Knife. That we genuinely are just good people. We love them to death. And that's all we got for a while. Still. I had a good time. Heck yeah. This has been a blast. So good to be back, man. I know, dude. It's so good to be back. And um, we hope everybody out there is doing well, staying safe. And thank you so much for following along. Please consider hitting subscribe. Check out other videos we have on the channel. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.